Welcome to the Barbara Christensen Podcast. The views expressed during this podcast do not necessarily reflect the views or policies of the streaming services or the host, and these are being shared for entertainment possibilities only. Please connect with your doctor before taking on any new wellness activities, changing your diet, or supplementation routine. Barbara Christensen is a certified personal trainer holding a diploma in nutrition and additional certifications in aromatherapy, Reiki, and other energetic and therapeutic modalities. This podcast will open your mind to the tools to clear the chaos from your life, from your body, release the beliefs in your being, activate your awareness, and remove any blocks holding you back from the life you want to live. Now let's get started. podcast. So today we are talking about old trauma. And I wanted to talk about this for a number of reasons. Um, There's a lot of different aspects that we can go into in this. Today our centralized focus is going to be on kind of the trifecta of one of these where we've got old belief patterns a blocked pineal gland, and um, this sort of bone conduction and what that has to do with it. Um, Very ancestral in shamanic terms, but uh, we'll get a little deeper into that. But one of the things that I find with a lot of my clients as being a holistic coach, right? I have a diploma in nutrition. I'm a certified personal trainer, certified aromatherapist. So I do have a lot of that background, but I'm also a certified shamanic practitioner, right? An energy worker, energy teacher. (laughs) So... You know, the thing that I I notice is that if we're not taking care of our body, just keep this in mind. The idea of becoming toxic, right? Um, That was a great title for a book that Suzanne Summers wrote, Tox-Sick, right? But we become toxic because we're not actually... uh, I would say methylating energy. A lot of us understand the term of methylation now with the increased knowledge out there of um, B12, folic acid, and all of that. So we're not great methylators of the old energies. And so especially if you are really holding on to excess weight, okay, because you're holding on to excess energy, Consider that your body is just a very fancy operating system that's, you know, holding the software of your soul. And as such, it knows that if there's too many toxins, too much sugar, then I store things. Okay, that's what it does. That's its programming. And so we are on a cellular level when we are dealing with the biology of belief, right? We are opening up our cells to release those old stored memories. But if you don't have a functional pathway and you aren't doing things to detoxify, then it just goes and stores somewhere else. A lot of times it might, you know, hide out and store in your muscles. It might store in an organ. It might store, you know, right in your brain. It may just create new cells and go store there. So there's a lot of things that are really synchronistically merging together, which is why my path went from very research-oriented geek into 
the added aspect of woo having been, you know, intuitive since as far back as I can remember to age four. So we have old trauma in our bodies, right? And many of us have worked to clear up that trauma, but we haven't cleared out the trauma. Now, of course, the very first step is realizing those old beliefs. Okay, healing those old beliefs, understanding where they come from, right? That's the first part of the work. That's really the hard part of the work, okay, where we are doing all of those deep journeys and working with therapists and, you know, um, sound baths, all these things trying to remove the trauma. And that's, in a lot of ways, is the hard part, okay? But what happens then if you have a blocked pineal gland? Now, one of the things that I've noticed, even in myself at times, when we push out all of these things with healing, what happens is if we don't release it, it starts getting stored. And one of the places that it likes to store is in the uh, lymph glands, where it is those last remnants of the implants behind the ears, and in our pineal gland. It really loves those locations. It also loves the brain. Um, But I feel like it kind of, it's an easy move from the pineal gland, gland into the brain, into the sinuses. A lot of people that have sinus problems, I really feel like um, a lot of that is just subtle body energy. But after you've done a lot of a healing session or many healing sessions, right, you can almost feel like you have jet lag, okay, or you start having insomnia, And what this is, is it is that you can now see that your pineal gland is actually getting blocked. And we think of it in terms of calcium, but calcium, right, like minerals are just uh, ionic. And, you know, calcium is very ionic. That's why you see a lot of healers that um, end up with really bad teeth right? If we're not gone through the process early enough on to work through and heal those pathways, one of the places it loves to store is in our teeth. And we end up having really crappy, right? Problems with our teeth, like in terms of not just cavities, right? I'm talking in terms of um, like the the bones, the teeth breaking, okay? But there's also, right, you start having memory issues. Um, You start having um, all kinds of like melatonin and pineal sort of linked traumas, okay? So it moves from one trauma to physical trauma, from emotional trauma to physical trauma, okay? And both of those are still going to be very inflammatory. Let me just add that in. So you have to start treating the issues with the pineal gland, okay? So that can be things like drinking filtered water, Okay, so that you're not getting all of the chemicals and all of the added like fluoride and um, don't get me wrong, I think fluoride actually has a place. When my daughter was born, we had a full whole house filtration system and because I had at the time very bad bacteria in my mouth she ended up with bad bacteria in her mouth and had no protection. And so she 
had several cavities at age three, <laughs> right? Because of that. So I do feel like it has a place. It has a structural place. Just not in the abundance that we actually um, take it in at. And that's the problem with everything in overabundance, right? Too much uh, of everybody else's energy. <laughs> too much of if you are very much energy uh, like connective, your body will crave the salt and the sugars because the salt is what helps the cells talk to each other and the sugars opens up the cells to either store things or release things. And that's why we crave those things. So you do have to uh, sometimes modify for four to eight weeks, right? Modify, make sure that you're drinking water, not out of plastic bottles, okay, but uh, filtered water out of glass bottles. Uh, make sure that you are, you know, transitioning out to a fluoride-free toothpaste for at least eight weeks. But also look at your supplementation and make sure you're not getting like really high amounts of calcium. Now for uh, women, okay, men too, but um, it really seems to impact more of the feminine healers because men don't see as big of a drop in estrogen. But when we have that lower estrogen, it actually lowers the melatonin. So there's some sort of a, I mean, melatonin is a hormone, but there is some sort of a mechanism of trying to balance circadian rhythms that comes along with being a feminine who has the ability to birth a child, right? Um, it's just part of the old, the old operating system. And so as the estrogen falls, then they will see lower melatonin and they'll see this as a marker that they are watching for with older women for your risk of low bone density. So that's why when I decided to talk about this with all of you, I wanted to talk about, right, these old trauma patterns. It's we get rid of the old beliefs, but then they get stuck in areas, right? Blocked pineal, we have to start removing things that are gonna bind the old memories. And we have to start doing things to fortify. And part of that really does have to do with that bone conduction, that bone energy, okay? The structure of your operating system. Now, you can do some beautiful detoxification things, um, right? healthy green juices, um, cilantro added into your diet, uh, right? Just more fruits and vegetables, making sure that if you don't digest well, that you are taking supplementation that helps you to break down things. It can be as simple as using bitters, but if you have um, candida that is very high, that can be the thing that kicks it up off the charts that shows you how bad things really are. Um, and there's a difference between, like if you can do bitters and you're like, I think I have candida problems, but it doesn't really trigger you, then you might actually have uh, SIBO problems and not candida problems. But you can do, right? Like if you go to my Paleo Veggio website, you can find the article about um, the sauna blanket. Like not everyone has room for a sauna, but just about every one of you living in the U.S. have room for a sauna blanket, right? And it's got the same, you know, um, infrared and the beautiful stones and everything in it to help detoxify 
Uh, you take a little niacin, the flushing type, to open up those cells. You uh, get into, you know, do a little workout, get it the cells open, get into your sauna blanket. Everything gets flushed out. Make sure you're drinking good hydration, right? Whether it's the soul water or something else with electrolytes in it. And then you sop it all up with the zeolites or the activated charcoal. And again, you continue to do those things that are going to help you flush things out of your system. But the damages that have already been done to your bones from all of this, you have to build it back up. One of my favorite ways is a vibration plate, right? Just 10 minutes a day on a vibration plate. And I'm pretty sure I probably have an article on paleoveggio.com about the vibration plate that I got. I think I spent $125 on mine and I've had it for about five years now. So it doesn't have to be, things don't have to be expensive to be supportive. But, right, our bones carry so much in them that we don't quite understand. And it is very important that we are keeping them strong. But there are ways to keep them strong that doesn't require those high, high minerals. Um, on an energetic level, at least, I'm talking about because of how the subtle body reacts to the negative energies in the world. Now, of course, I am not a doctor. I am not diagnosing, treating, curing, right? Uh, none of that. Just giving you what I have found to be true for myself and in my research. Now, you might find more information about right ways to de-stress an overstressed body which is also part of the trauma patterns in my exploring aromatherapy book i know that i've written about um, toxins and the toxin load in my paleo veggio right the nourished and 30 book but also in the micronutrient happiness book so there's a lot of information out there and i've put information out there as well so it's easy to access you can find also i'm sure i've got articles that i've written about you know the methylation pathways and things like that that you can find out there but it's important to understand that just because you've worked through a trauma, it isn't just removed from your being. There's work that needs to be done. That is why, you know, the uh, shamanic work, especially in the forms of Olympia, which I'm really hoping to be able to do some one-on-one -on -one energetic work here Um going towards next year as we're getting out of this pandemic but there's nothing that can replace that energy work to help you clear stagnant energies that are still just hanging around you've worked through the process but you just are somebody that is a methylation struggler of energy right some people are, who knows, enlightened. <laughs> and they, their bodies just are like high functioners. And they're like, oh, we cleared that trauma. Let's move it on. No problem. You, most of us are not. Okay, so it's important that you do these things. It's important that you understand all of this. Um, that's why there is a Goldilocks right, when we're talking about supplementation, right, not too little, not too much, right, there's a fine line in there, and then really making sure, right, that you, once we move from that process, we move into the gut, right, because the gut is the one that takes all the nutrients and sends it out, 
right? Like little ships in the night <laughs> to all the different processes in the operating system to make sure that they are all functioning properly, right? I am a believer in supplementation because most of us eat the same eight fruits and vegetables our entire life and it's needed. And even those eight fruits and vegetables that we love and eat all the time do not have all of the nutrients in the soil that the soil used to have. So just something I repeat myself in in my books and I just like to put it out there, you know, remember that what's in the soil, and like we say in the, you know, aromatherapy business, what's in the soil is in your oil, <laughs> okay? It's the same thing with your food. And then it's the same thing then with your body, okay? So it's important to remember that. So I hope you guys have a beautiful week. And uh, I hope that you guys work on releasing the stagnant trauma energy in your body. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.